India is a country with histories and legendary stories which are passed across from generation to generation. One of these histories is that of the sages of city staying on the mountain of the Himalayas to pray. As they pray, the heavens send them a boon, a shining light. It was the divine light Bram Shakti. The divine light doesn't come to them alone, as it comes with several weapons of power. These weapons of power are called astras, and there are several of them. The astras come with the power of fire, the fire stone, which is called the Agniastra. Then the water stone is called the Jalestra, and the air stone is called the Pawanastra. Behind these three powerful astras is an astra, which none of the elders on the mountain expected. It is so strong and powerful that it looks like Lord Shiva third eye. It is so powerful that it drags the elders back, although everything happening on that mountain is the answered prayers of the elders. However, the last astra seems to them like that, and they immediately assume that they have to put it under control. The last astra has the powers to create and to destroy, and if it isn't controlled well, it will cause the end of humanity. Eventually, the pure light of the heavens that is shined on them. Behind that light is a very honorable statue, a power and a force, which drives all the elders on the mountain to their kneels immediately. They kneel and bow to their new lord, the Brahmastra. Since that day, the people have begun to protect the Brahmastra from destroying the world. They know how strong it is, so they all use their respective astra to save the world from the Brahmastra. They hold it in high esteem and they have their missions in mind, so they call themselves the Brahmansh. The Brahmansh pass the Brahmastra from generation to generation. In modern day India, in the city of Mumbai, there is a young, carefree boy who has no knowledge of the light and the power inside of him. He doesn't know that he will be the light that will bring back and protect the power of Brahmansh and his astras. The young boy, Shiva walks into a temple during the festival of Dusashra, which is the festival of good and evil. He jumps into the temple and joins the other worshippers. As the worship starts, Shiva is given the piece of worship materials, which is with the other worshippers, and Shiva closes his eyes with the item in his hands and prays to it. With his eyes closed, he sees several things, and he eventually sees a scientist, Mohan. Mohan is in Delhi, and he has one of the pieces of Brahmastra. As he works on it, he notices an intruder in his house. He turns and sees the man, saying he is as smooth as a cheetah. The hunter comes to ask for the astra he is working on, and he tries to distract the man with his words, but that doesn't work. He eventually notices another man in the house. He tries to engage them in conversation, calling the first hunter a raftar and the second one a zor. The zor doesn't seem like he is there to play as he hits Mohan immediately, asking him to release the piece of Brahmastra in his hands. When Mohan refuses, he puts his blood on the box containing the Brahmastra and it brings forth some blue light. Then he throws it into the house. Zor hits him immediately and he falls off. The two hunters enter the place to find the box of Brahmastra, but they can't find it. They scatter the house and Mohan keeps distracting them with words. As they are distracted, he uses his legs to open another compartment in his house and attaches another astra to his leg. His feet become that of a monkey. He tells the assassin that while they are Zor and Raftair, he is a monkey. He jumps from one part of the house to another, hitting the men as he can, and he later stops. He tells them what is on his leg isn't just a chain, but it is an astra called Vanarastra, the super monkey weapon. He worships the weapon and he flies up and meets Vanarastra. After the reunion, he returns to the ruins of his house, thinking all the calamity has stopped. He takes a telescope on the floor and he changes it into its real form, which is actually the piece of Brahmastra. He holds it and he is attacked by a lady. She uses her magic to hold him down and Zor and Raft in return. She tells him she is Ju Noon, meaning passion, and she wants the Ju Noon. He asks her what she wants it for, but she reminds him what her name is again. She forcefully removes the astra on his leg and also takes the piece of Ju Noon. He tells her she has darkness within her but there's another person with light, and he is sure the person with light will fight her and get back the peace claiming that in a fight between darkness and light of Brahmastra, the light always wins. Shiva recovers himself and joins the festival. He falls in love at first sight with a young girl, Isha, during the festival and shares glances with her. After the festival, they go out for a dance and he sees her with her parents. Suddenly, he sees the light of Brahmastra again, 
and he faints. He wakes up later in the midst of his friends. They laugh at him, ask him why he suddenly fainted, but he says it's because he danced too much. They mock him that it is because of Isha and he won't see her again. They leave for their next show, and during the show, he coincidentally sees Aisha again. He immediately jumps to find her leaving his friends alone. He joins Aisha on the elevator and he goes to speak to her. She asks him who he is but refuses to give him her number. She invites him to a party, but he says he has another party to attend. As he leaves the elevator, she accuses him of not inviting him to his party. She follows him out and he explains that she is from a rich home and the party isn't for the rich. They play and he goes home. She follows him with her friends as they watch him enter an orphanage home where he stays and takes care of orphans. She joins him in the celebration of one of the kids' birthdays, and after the party, he takes her to his room and he tells her he doesn't have a father. He narrates that he has lost his mom too, but he doesn't tell her the circumstances at which he lost her. He talks about how he saw light when he saw her and says she is light. They hold hands, and suddenly, he sees the vision of Brahmastra again. He staggers and almost falls. He runs out of the room, telling Isha he is coming. He sees Janoon torturing Mohan to tell him where the next piece of the Brahmastra is. Janoon calls Vash Mukut the crown of control and keeps torturing Mohan. Vash manipulates the mind of Mohan, telling him they know he is the first keeper, and he should tell them who the second keeper is. He confesses that the second keeper is in Varanasi, an artist named Anish Shitty. When it's time for them to get the name of the third keeper from him, he screams for them to stop, and Janoon's power stops. He says he won't tell them anything again, and he jumps down the cliff and dies. After he dies, Shiva wakes up. Shiva remembered that he had left Isha at his house. He returns there, and the kids tell him that Isha waited about two hours for him and she doesn't stay in India. She is from London and she is staying at her grandpa's place, they tell her her family is organizing another party. He goes there and sees a newspaper about Mohan's death. He browses about it, and when Isha returns, she asks him what is wrong with him. He explains what he has been seeing to her and tells her the killers are looking for another man, Anish, an artist. They browse about Anish and find out he has a program. He decides to take it upon himself to warn him, and Isha insists on following him. So they travel to Varanasi together. On the water, a fire comes to Shiva and he holds it, but it doesn't burn. He tells Aisha that fire doesn't hurt him. She gets angry that he is hiding a secret from her, and as they try to reconcile, Janoon passes beside them and holds Aisha's hands. Shiva recognizes Janoon and her team and tells Isha they must find Anish first. They eventually see Anish, but they don't have a way to send him off without the killer's knowledge. Aisha suggests that since the killers don't recognize them, Shiva should approach Anish and she will distract Rafton. Their plan works, but Rafton figures that Isha purposely distracted him. He approaches her, later, to kill her, but she screams Shiva's name. Shiva goes to fight, and Anish helps them by taking a gunshot. Anish helps them disappear when Junoon arrives. They offer to take Anish to the hospital, but he refuses, asking them to leave. Shiva tells him he knows he wants to get to the Brahmastra Guru the ashram, and they beg him to give them the address so they can drive him there. After driving for a while, they stop, and Shiva asks Anish if he can see the piece of Brahmastra with Anish. Immediately, Anish shows him and he sees visions again, which are about Junoon wanting to crush Anish. Anish asks them to get to the ashram, saying safeguarding the Brahmastra is his responsibility, and he will wait to fight Junoon. He calls his Sanskrit chants and a heavy bull comes out. He pushes the truck back, and Shiva keeps seeing him in trances. Eventually, he pushes the truck off but dies. Rafter attacks Shiva and Isha, and they also try to drive away from him. Their car falls off the cliff, but they survive. They get to the ashram, and Shiva jumps inside the building to open it while Isha stays outside. Rafter tries to attack Isha, and angrily Shiva calls fire that completely destroys Raftar. He collapses immediately, but his power calls the Guru from inside the building. He is in coma for a few days. He sees how their house cut fire when he was a child, and everyone died except him. And he sees Junoon begging her idol, the Brahmastra, for power, claiming she needs the power to wake it up. He releases a piece of block for her. When Shiva wakes up, he walks into a meeting with the Brahmash, 
and after the meeting ends, he meets the guru, who tells him he is an Astra. He is Agni Astra, the Fire Astra, and he has to join them. He refuses and wants to leave with Isha, but Guru tells him his parents were also Brahmins, and he will only tell him how his parents died if he warrants to hear the information. He decides to join, and Guru sends Isha away with the other Brahmins to bring his clothes. He starts training about how to bring out his inner fire. His trainings are futile, and one night, he gets a dream about Isha being attacked. He runs to call her and finds out she was attacked, but she's fine at the moment. He gets angry and fire forms everywhere. Guru comes out. He tells Guru that Isha is the button to his fire, but he also fears fire because fire burnt his mother. Guru asks him what he will pick between love and fear, and he decides to pick love and unleashes his fire. He keeps training until he becomes efficient, and one day he asks Guru for his story again, and he plays his fire. The fire he plays with burns the heart of one of Junoon's men, and he comes to attack them. After he stops, the fire stops, and the man runs away. He tells Guru the man is Junoon's man, and Guru says the black pendant on his neck has the power of Agni Astra, the fire Astra, and he decides to tell them the story. He narrates that 30 years ago, Brahmastra was in one piece, and they were worshipping it inside the river. One of the warriors, Dev, is so strong that he learned all the Astra power, and he is the first to unleash the Agni Astra. However, he wants Brahmastra too, and since he is strong, he destroys the council and steals it. That day, the earth and heaven unite, and Brahmastra comes alive. It turns out, Dev's obsession could lead to the end of the world. However, there is another player in the game, Amrita. She decides to fight Dev, and her boat returns to the headquarters with two pieces of Brahmastra, and they believe both Dev and Amrita died in the fight. Shiva wonders what's his family history in that story, and Guru narrates that Dev and Amrita were in love, and before the fight, she was pregnant, so he is most likely the result of that pregnancy. He figures Guru doesn't have real proof, and he gets disappointed. They search that city for proof of Junoon's men, and they find the pendant. They see Junoon in her army and see how she is preparing them for the battle. Shiva wears the pendant and he gets another vision. This time, it allows Junoon to notice them. Guru cuts a tree and they escape, although he tells them they must escape immediately before Junoon catches them. When he gets home, he meets Aisha, who has brought the conch his mother left for him. Guru tells him the couch is the proof of his story, and the couch is a disguise for the last piece of Brahmastra which can be revealed with his blood. When he puts his blood, it turns into the last piece of Brahmastra. Shiva acknowledges he is the child of Dev and Amrita, and they both didn't die during the battle as Dev is also alive, and he needs the Brahmastra to live. He is the leader of Junoon and her army, and they need the complete Brahmastra to wake him up. As the Brahmins prepare to escape, Junoon arrives with her army. She fights them, and Shiva collapses. When he wakes, he finds out Junoon has taken the second piece, and she has taken one of the Brahmins Rani, and they will torture her till she reveals where the last piece is. He confronts Junoon with Aisha taking along the last piece without giving her. When they get there, he dribbles the piece around her and calls fire. His fire is so strong that Junoon can't penetrate, and Junoon has to use the tear in her eyes to quench it. She tells him he has the powers of Dev and that he should join them, but he says he doesn't want darkness. Rani attacks and tells Isha to remain in Rani's circle while he fights, but Isha goes to help Rani. As a result, he activates his fire to protect them, and they escape into the mountain, although Junoon chases them. Shiva throws the piece to one of the students, who later throws it to Rani. Shiva gets caught and almost gets killed, but when he hears the noise of Isha shouting his name, he regains his powers. He fights until he gets to Junoon, who brings out a piece of Deva and attacks him. He collapses, and Junoon goes to fight Isha and Tenzing, who is with the last piece. Isha asks Tenzing to leave, and she threatens to throw the piece into the river if Junoon comes nearer to her. However, Dev tells Junoon that she can't do it, so Junoon approaches her, but Tenzing saves her and throws Junoon into the river. They hug passionately, but Junoon stands and stabs Tenzing. She takes the last piece from Aisha and puts Brahmastra together, thereby destroying the world. The mountain starts falling, but Shiva insists on getting to Isha. 
He jumps through mountains for her, hugging her and telling her he doesn't want to live without her. Suddenly, he unleashes the greatest weapon, the weapon greater than the Brahmastra. As a result of his sacrifice of love, he wakes up a fire that doesn't need to be switched and repairs the world. He wins that war, but the war hasn't ended as Dev wakes up due to the Brahmastra, 